Well, welcome once again. This is the Doctor of Digital from the Doctor of Digital podcast. And what we hope to do is to transform your business and life with business and education inspiration. I introduce busy business leaders to trends in business, technology, and marketing to highlight people you should know. Did you know the Bible inspired Hollywood? Many blockbuster films owe a surprising debt to the Bible. From epic tales of good versus evil to grand narratives of love, loss, and redemption, the Bible has provided countless storylines that continue to resonate with audiences today. Movie makers recognize this power of storytelling and use it to create fresh and engaging content that brings the Bible to life for a modern audience. Now, enter Appian Media. This innovative organization is dedicated to providing biblically accurate, visually engaging, and freely available resources to help people connect with the Bible on a deeper level. Their commitment to accuracy ensures viewers are getting a faithful representation of the scriptures, while their professional production value makes the content visually compelling and captivating. But perhaps more importantly, Appian Media makes all the resources freely available, removing financial barriers that might prevent people from exploring the Bible. During this episode, we'll do a deep dive into the changes and hot topics of producing documentary film about the Bible. We will leverage the expertise of my guests and how to navigate the unique dynamics of the field. By the end of this episode, you'll be better equipped to know what to do and I encourage you to contact my guest, Greg DeHutt, co-founder and COO of Appian Media. With that, Craig, thank you so much for taking some time out. Good to see you today. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me. So got to ask you, of course, your background. How does one get into producing documentary films about the Bible? How did you get in this field? <laughs> it was not a straight line. Okay. Um, <laughs> so I, I studied film back in uh, 2005, uh, went to film school, and the original intent was to do feature films. I wanted to be the next greatest writer and director sure. of feature right. films, narrative. And um, was able to kind of dip my toes a little bit into television broadcasting and news and came to realize that I enjoyed more telling stories of real people and mm. real things that were happening. Right. Um, I still have that creative itch to occasionally do a short film or two. Um, but over the last really 10 years or so, have really fell in love with just the documentary aspect of it. Okay. And uh, met another fellow creative and Christian here in Indianapolis. And together, the two of us thought, well, why can't we make documentaries about the Bible and make it compelling and, and available? Sure. That is something which is kind of interesting. It's an interesting story of how you got in this in the first place. Would you say, and what would you say are some of the changes that have taken place over documentaries and also films about the Bible? Oh, that is a great question. It's fascinating. You know, 2005 doesn't seem that long ago, but it's long enough that in film school, the idea of shooting video on your phone was ridiculous. No one talked about that. Right. Um, you were lucky if you had a phone that took fairly decent thumbnail sized photos. Okay. Now, and, and with our most recent documentary, some of the footage that you see was shot wow. on an iPhone and it is not uncommon, um, to be able to produce and even edit without ever leaving that smartphone. And so our job has become not that that has replaced the, you know, the professional cameras that we use, but yeah. our job has become a lot easier in capturing these kind of unscripted spur of the moment, authentic moments, mm -hmm. because I can just pull my phone out real quick and capture that and do it in, in an incredible quality that was not previously available less than 20 years ago. Absolutely. So it really has changed a lot. So that's what I'm yeah. curious about, how things have changed so rapidly, mm -hmm. along with technology and also just the subject of the Bible, too, which is really interesting. So are there topics in the Bible that people are expressing an interest in? And I also think there's a larger framework because things are going on in society, right? So someone mm -hmm. might make the case like, well, 
why are people interested in the Bible, right? There's a lot of alternatives out there today. So what can you tell us about some of the topics in your field? Sure. So from the beginning, when we began Appian Media, um, we didn't know how many opportunities we would be able to have to create this kind of content. So we started with what we felt was the most uh, sought after and, and desired topic, which was Jesus Christ. And so that was our first for foray into that. We spent two years producing a series called Following the Messiah. Mm -hmm. But since that time, we um, not solely based on this, but we are co you know, constantly asking and, and looking into what are people most interested in right now? Right. You know, what are the topics that people are searching for on YouTube? Um, can we go to those places is also, you know, a question we need to consider. Right. And so that was one of the driving forces behind our most recent documentary about the Exodus. That is one of the most, um, sought after and searched and researched, um, topic, biblical topic, especially on YouTube. And so we wanted to, to, to offer a perspective and, and really, um, dig deep into the, the biblical narrative of that. And, and that's what I find really interesting and fascinating because there are those people who are very skeptical, let's say. So right. that's what I'm curious about, like how right. and you've been able to position yourself in such a way that with all the skeptics that are out there and all the alternatives, like of all things, why the Bible? Because it's right. not in a traditional sense in society anymore. It's true. And, uh, you know, I'm under no illusions. I don't believe that we will ever produce a piece of content that will convince everyone. Um, if that were possible, it, it would have long ago been done. Um, the Bible does require an element of faith. Um, that said, there is plenty of evidence, archaeological and historical and geographical evidence throughout the biblical text that help reinforce uh, the faith that we have in it. And so we do touch on that. Um, not everything is purely from uh, what you'd say an, a, an apologetic approach. Can we prove that these stories are true? Mm -hmm. um, but we do touch on that on each of our documentaries. Let's take you to the places that the Bible says it it happened. And is that is that a place that exists? Can we verify that these events happened? The Exodus gets a little more tricky. Sure, absolutely. <laughs> um, you know, the story of Jesus only happened 2,000 or so years ago. The story of the Exodus, you're, you're talking thousands more. So there's less to see. There's less, fewer places that you can go and stand and go. We know for sure this was the spot. You know, Moses was here when he turned the water into blood. Like, we can't say that. But what we are able to do is um, we interview archaeologists and historians and locals um, and talk about what has been found, um, some of the conclusions that can be drawn. And... We don't go quite as much into depth as some documentaries about this particular topic have done in years past. They do an exceptional job of really digging in. Hmm. Um, but we do touch on it with enough for us to go, look, these were real people. They really did exist in Egypt. Um, and this group of individuals came out of that land through this barren wasteland of a wilderness and, and made their way into Canaan through, through God's provision. And there are things that we can show you along the way and talk about um, that, that reinforce the faith. Yeah, and that, that's one reason I ask specifically about Exodus, because the further back you go, and Exodus is yeah. a great example because there isn't the kind of archaeological and historical background, but obviously when it comes to a figure like Jesus of Nazareth, he made a much bigger and visible impression on the world, right? There's right. more records, there's more resources and what have you. So when you're making a documentary, you can't say quite the definitively, but you certainly mm -hmm. can allude to things and discoveries are happening all the time, which is the fascinating right. thing, right? So it's yeah. like, you know, we might not have documentation of everything, but oddly enough, things keep popping up, right? right. Suggestive of that there is more to these stories than you might think it's just a fable. Yeah. When we were in Israel in 2018, we were able to interview an archeologist who uh, travels to Shiloh, which is where um, the tabernacle was housed prior right. to the temple being built. So you're talking about figures like Eli and Samuel, and they've been going back year after year, digging up 
okay. um, there in Shiloh. And it's amazing. But he made a comment that has really struck with stuck with me is um, 95% of Israel has not been archaeologically excavated. Wow. They've done about 5% of the land of the Bible. And so when, when critics say, we haven't found, we haven't found what you're saying. It's like, well, because you've, you've only scratched the surface of it, but isn't it interesting mm -hmm. in just the 5% that has been adequately archaeologically exposed, we do find cities are where the Bible says they were and people groups are where the Bible says they were when the Bible says they were. Imagine what we'll find when, when individuals, um, start digging up the other 95 percent yeah and you know what's i find really fascinating of course is that when you consider these things and these issues compared to other things in the ancient world since i have a background in ancient history i'm saying mm -hmm. compare to augustus and julius caesar in which many of the things that these are the most famous people of their day and there's little archaeological evidence there is little to compare it to so when you're going and thinking about the Bible, well, don't expect everything to be verified by something else. None of ancient history is verified by other things. Right. Someone pointed out to us that there is there is far more proof to the existence of specifically Jesus Christ than there is of any ancient historical figure of that time. And it's it's not even close. And so even emperors during that period of time, Roman emperors, you'd think... You know, and there's proof. There certainly is. You can you can read about it and 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 see the cities and things that they built. But it is, you know, uh, we found even over there when we traveled to Israel, we never encountered someone who denied that Jesus was a real person. Now, there's quite a bit of debate over there as to as far as who he really was. Sure. Was he the son of God? Was he just a prophet? Was he mm -hmm. a heretic? But no one over there is foolish enough to deny that he was a historical figure because they're living in the land and the evidence is, is undeniable. Um, but again, it does go back to faith. Um, the proofs that he was the son of God, I believe that they are there, um, but it is going to require some level of faith. Over here in America, 21st century um, individuals are more more likely to deny that he was even a person. Um, but it's really, it's, it's due to ignorance. They, they don't understand how much evidence there is of the actual individual. And so that's what we're hoping to do is get people to see the places, appreciate the culture, mm -hmm. the modern day culture, right. um, try to consider what the ancient culture was at the time that these accounts were written and see the, the history and the geography um, even in, in some instances, uh, considering the weather, <laughs> uh, one of our team members uh, is a, a trained meteorologist. And so it's not uncommon for him to go, look, when we consider some of these biblical stories, weather is, is something that's fascinating to consider in the land of Israel. And what we want people to do is with that information, um, read the biblical text from a, a renewed perspective, read mm -hmm. it with, a, we hope, a renewed excitement. Um and, and dig deeper into it. When you think of like, if there's sort of the average ordinary person, I guess, what's the aim? Like, what would you generally recommend people to think about in what you do? And of course, I'm really curious then that your distribution model, because right. if you're giving things away now, I mean, the obvious question, well, how do you survive? How do you make right. money? So what are your general recommendations for people and how do you approach your work? Sure. Um, so it is interesting, especially in the industry that we are in, to say we spent all this money and all this time and we created this thing and then we gave it away for free online. <laughs> and yeah. my, sure. you know, my peers and others in the industry, they go, sorry, sorry, you did what? Um, <laughs> and the way that we're able to to do that is is from the beginning, we have been as Appian Media, a non-for-profit organization. And so um, individuals donate on the front end. And so we create the content after having raised what we need. And that's that's production costs, that's travel costs, that's post-production and writing on the other end of it. And so we are not scrambling to find theaters mm. to host as many screenings so that we can recoup that cost. We raised it on the front end of it. And so many people 
Um, many of our largest donors are so thankful that they can be part of something that makes these resources available for, for people without the barrier of cost. It was something that we were looking at from the beginning. And so that's that's been our approach. What can we do to remove barriers between people and the Bible? Okay. And um, really uh, approaching in a way that, that, that we are good stewards with the things that, that God has blessed us with. Um, to make these kinds of things is not cheap, <laughs> especially in places like uh, Egypt and Jordan, um, film permits. Uh, we don't just show up and start filming video. You you can't do that. You shouldn't do that in the Middle East. Um, and so, you know, taking the time and and the the resources necessary to make sure that our trips are safe and legal and um, and beneficial to everyone. So, what's uh, expertise in terms of what you do? And maybe it's partly technological, partly business, because you have a nonprofit model. But the technological aspect is in terms of using the newer technology that's out here. The iPhone is pretty amazing, like you're saying. Like nobody right. would have thought of it back in 2005. Now you do. So I mean, what kind of expertise do you do, and what would you? And I guess what's the future? Like where do you see yourself going? And and I'm always hesitant. To, I mean, I assume now that I've been doing this for about two decades, I can consider myself an expert. Uh, but any of any of us who's working in this industry always feel like I, I don't know as much as I want to know. We're constantly learning. Technology is constantly changing. Um, that said, we do try to surround ourselves um, with the right kind of creatives who are not just proficient in, in what they do, but are eager to learn more. Um, and so the cameras that we used in our first production trip in 2016 are very different than the cameras that we used when we went to Egypt um, a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. And keeping up with those things, I certainly don't want to give the impression that we shot the whole thing on phones. We did not. Right, um, right. But what we did, you know, that first production trip, we shot in HD because that's those were the cameras that were available. Um, there were a few at that time that shot 4K, um, but they were out of our our budget. Well, this last trip, obviously, we're shooting on cinema cameras that can shoot 4K or more. Um, we're flying drones and, and things with the, you know, we're trying to look into the future. Hey, 10 years from now, are people going to be consuming content in this way mm -hmm. and trying to stay ahead of that curve? Um, we have on several of our trips, the last two or three of them have brought cameras that shoot in 360 degrees. Oh, and we've got some really interesting content where I'm still trying to figure out the best way of giving it to our audiences where, where they can look around mm. as they're walking with us through the streets of Cairo or walking with us uh, or driving with us while we're driving through uh, Wadi Rum in Jordan. Um, five years from now, what technology is going to be available? I'm not sure, but you can bet that we will try to be incorporating right. that. Um, I think about what Apple has just come out with, with, with their vision pro and spatial video. So it's shooting with two different cameras, trying to give you a more accurate depth perception. And that's fascinating to me. Um, will we be producing content where people could put headsets on and right. truly right. immerse themselves into the land? I'm fascinated to consider it. And, and we're, you know, we're looking into that. I was just talking with someone yesterday for months and months. We've been talking about um, photogrammetry and, and the technology of being able to capture high res photographs of a thing or a place that can then be turned into a full three dimensional model. Hmm. And, and the benefit of that would be creating three dimensional spaces that students or people interested in the Bible could walk through, literally walk through at their own pace and being able to look around a, you know, the, the city of Jericho or Capernaum. Um, and how can we quickly, because that's the hang up right now, how can we quickly produce that kind of content when we're in country? Um, and then uh, your, your question earlier, and I, I realized I didn't quite answer it, you know, who is this for? Uh, you know, what audiences are, are we recommending? It began originally with high school students in mind. Um, hmm. We were teaching myself and, and our co-founder, Stuart Peck, uh, we teach Bible classes on occasion. And I'm sure that anyone who teaches can, can relate. 
these high schoolers were coming in, phones in hand. That's what they've been consuming all day and learning from all day. And then we tell them to put those away. And now we're going to, you know, study the book. There's nothing wrong with the book. The book has lasted for millennia and that's what we ought to be studying. But what tools can we give young people specifically right. so that they can have media and technology to help them better appreciate the book? Mm -hmm. And as soon as we release our very first set of videos, we realize it's not just high schoolers who are asking for this. We had 90 year old viewers saying, I've studied the Bible my whole life. And I'm just now seeing the places that have been described. Um, I've got a six-year-old son hmm. who sees this content and watches it and, and engages with it um, in the same way that the Bible is for all ages. Um, you're going to understand more at different ages. Um, we want our content truly to, to be for all ages. And it, it's lasting too, right? I mean, I guess that's the idea. It's a, a document that is preserved and it's a new dimension i'd say like right a lot of people have been reading the bible but to then experience it i think it's very insightful the point you made about like get into the world of capernaum and the world mm. of egypt and the world of israel to see what it was like it brings the bible alive in so many ways you know yeah. fascinating way of approaching the bible and really insightful and interesting too so I'm curious if people are interested, how do they get a hold of you? How do they, what do you recommend? Do they see your films? Do they contact you directly? How do you, how do you contact or how do you get contacted? Absolutely. So all of our films thus far um, are available to watch for free online. You can either visit appianmedia.org and there's a library of films, including all of our podcasts and behind the scenes that you can watch. Um, most people find us on YouTube. So you can just search for Appian Media. Mm -hmm. and, and find us there on our YouTube channel. Um, Out of Egypt is the documentary that we just released back in mid-March. And that is currently available just on our website. Again, free to watch, no strings attached. Um, there are various screenings of that happening around the country right now, um, right. free for people to sign up. There's an events page on our website where you can register for those free tickets. Um, really, it's been our approach from the very beginning to... Um, again, try to remove barriers so yes. that people can have access to it. And so we're putting our content where people are already gathering. Mm -hmm. so it's on our website. It's on YouTube. We have a variety of distributors around the world, satellite television stations and, and streaming services um, okay. that we distribute our content through um, right now media and Faith Life TV and things like that. And so um, we encourage people. If they look for our content in a certain place and don't find it and would like to see it there, certainly reaching out to us and, and starting those conversations. I just got an email today. Someone wants a screening in Nashville, Tennessee, and they're saying, what, what can I do? You know, how, how do we get that ball rolling? Yeah. Um, and so we encourage people to, to host their own screenings and right. their own watch parties. And, and we try to help facilitate that as best we can. Awesome. It's a really fascinating area. So I really appreciate you taking some time out and chatting. I learned a whole lot and hope that other people did as well, because I think they could be as fascinated as I am. Thanks for taking some time, Craig. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Glad to do it. You bet. So thanks for your time. We'll also then get you some other interviews, and other people, and if hopefully you're as fascinated as I am. This whole idea of the Bible, it's not going anywhere, folks. It's been around for a long time, and people are very interested, regardless of what's going on. But you know, if you want exciting guests like Craig, please subscribe, like, share, positively review the podcast, because hopefully you're enjoying it as much as I am. You know, until next time, we got some more guests coming your way. Keep it coming. Keep everyone supportive. And I want to thank the publishers of Burning America and On Track, Ian Hunter, for their support of the program. Until next time, we'll see you at Deus Vault.